Hello, this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is Lee and Lee's Unifan SL Infinity 120. These are an upgrade to the Lee and Lee's SL120 fans, and a mishmash of the SL and AL120 fans that makes things really interesting. Now these are interlockable, daisy-chainable ARGB fans, which as you can see, look incredible. They've added in some interesting infinity mirrors, both in the center of the fan blade and along the edge that I'll show off as we go through this video. And you can also see highlights around the edges as well as the transparent blades with the RGB lighting bleeding through there. So there's loads of RGB levels on this and also the infinity mirrors have a really interesting layering inside them so essentially there's, there's a 0.5 millimeter gap between each of the layers which creates some really nice visuals inside the case. And in this video I'm unboxing and installing them in the Lee & Lee Air Mini, swapping them out for the original AL120s that I had in there previously and I wanted to be able to show off the end result, talk to you about the setup process and show you obviously the RGB lighting, the volume levels and other things. Now these are improved fans naturally, not just from the aesthetics but they've also improved the specs as well. So now these fans will run from 0 RPM all the way up to 2100. They have an airflow of 61.3 CFM, a static pressure of 2.66 and go up to a max level of 29 decibels. These are quite different from the original SL120s which topped out at 1900 RPM so it's worth bearing in mind they are different and I'm going to do a video separately to compare them and you can see the three unifans here, the AL120s, the SL120s and the SL120 infinity fans so you can see the difference between those i did a video previously comparing the other two and i'm going to do another one shortly to compare all three and just show off obviously the sl120 infinities are the nicest looking out of the lot and deliver really interesting specs and an interesting setup things have changed ever so slightly and it's worth bearing that in mind if you're coming from previous lee and lee uni fans because the connectors are ever so slightly different and also the setup is different. I've done a video separately on how to wire and connect up the fans in different ways, but in the same traditional manner, they sell them in either one or three packs. So you can buy a single fan or you can buy a triple pack. The triple pack is definitely the better option as I'll show you in a minute, but the single fan pack comes with the fan and a different sort of connector. So traditionally you had this sort of standard interesting connector that fitted on the end each of the fans in a single pack had that connector with it but now they've swapped that out and they've changed it ever so slightly and in a number of interesting ways these fans have also been upgraded in other ways too so they've thought out the process for it so the interlocking mechanism that usually snaps in between each of the fans is actually now removable so you can take it off the end if you wish to and if it's getting in the way or just for aesthetic reasons so the final fan can have the pins removed out of it you'll notice the new interlocking adapter as well the connector that connects up the cables is ever so slightly smaller and it fits in a different position it now goes in the middle of the fan and that's interesting but it also has both rgb and fan power connection on it in the standard sort of setup and I've done a video separately on this, but essentially that means that if you buy an individual fan, you can connect up to a system fan header and an RGB header on your motherboard without a control box. So it is possible to control these fans without a controller. And I've shown how to do that with as many as six fans potentially was pretty interesting. Now obviously the shiny shiny mirrors are protected with a plastic coating and you have a little plastic peel to peel off when you get them out of the box so they look kind of dull initially. When you peel off that plastic you'll see a very shiny mirror. It is worth noting that it is quite a fingerprint magnet so do take care when you're installing these that you don't make a mess on them but also I found that that plastic peel is a pain to get off so it's definitely better to take it off before you put it in the case. It came off okay there, but some of the other fans I found it just stuck to the surface and was a little bit tricky. So now you can see a shot of the SL120 Infinity fans from various angles and you'll see 
a very eye-pleasing fan. Lee and Lee's uni fans have always been the best looking RGB fans around in my mind. I've seen quite a few different setups and this is definitely my preference. They are really nice looking fans from a variety of angles. They've really thought out the design of these in a number of ways. Not just from the infinity mirrors, which are obviously very nice and very shiny, but also just the RGB lighting. Now the connection, as I said, is slightly different. So you see this connector is curious in more than one way. So you can see, for example, that the cables come out of it in a certain direction, but you can actually pop off the little cap at the top and then you can re-angle the cables so you can turn them to face the other way. This is interesting because this connection clips into the fan and it will only clip in in one direction which means usually those cables will face the same way but if you're mounting your fans in your case you might find you're positioning them in different angles and therefore you want to be able to put the cables towards the back of the case or to keep things nice and neat this obviously gives you the option to do that. Now Lee and Lee was kind enough to send over a multitude of single fan boxes so I was able to whip those out and show you what you can do with them and as you can see interlocking fans really easy just to connect together so they have the little brackets that stick out the side of them that then push into the holes on the other ones and then they just clip together this makes the setup process for these fans really simple and it's one of the joys of Lee and Lee fans if you've not seen them already it's just so simple to just to clip them together and connect them up you can connect them up into groups of up to four and then if you have a triple back as you can see here you get a little control box inside there they've actually changed the controller so this is worth bearing in mind if you're coming from previously in Lee fans the control box is different and the cables included in the box are different as well so you'll notice that in the second I'll show you a close up a bit more of that but essentially these fans actually have different cables to the ones included in the single pack which is a curiosity in itself so in the triple pack you get this little accessories box and in there you have the necessary control box now this control box is useful because it can control up to 16 fans from one box and that allows you to power multiple fans obviously you saw in the air mini that i had quite a few fans in there and i'm going to show you the process for setting those up now but this allows you to control up to 16 in groups of four so there are four groups and basically it connects up via power and usb connection so you see you have a usb cable you then have another cable which connects up rgb lighting and a system fan header and then you have another one which is a splitter cable so inside the little bag you get the control box and a magnet sticker system to stick it on and the thing that i found interesting about the design of this controller as well which is designed to work with l connect 3 which i'll show you later on is it also has two connections at the top which say sync on them and those are slightly different connectors those are rgb connectors from things like the galahad cooler so other rgb products from lee and lee will connect into this box as well and on the bottom you'll see there's a connector for the micro usb which i'll show you in a second but you'll notice that standard connections have a very flat connector up to them so basically there's a new flat cable that plugs into there and this control box now requires two SATA power connections so you're controlling both fan power and RGB lighting from one control box and potentially beyond just the fans that you're plugging into it which I thought was pretty interesting and then you need to plug in the micro USB cable which obviously connects up to your motherboard and I'll show you that in a second and the other cable which you can see here which has a connection for system fan header which then gives you PWM control of the fans for your motherboard software or BIOS and also an RGB connector which means you can plug that in to your motherboard and then sync your RGB lighting on the fans to your motherboard software and then for match up with other things. This becomes useful and I'll talk about why a bit later on if you have an additional fan that won't fit into the group of the control box. Obviously if you purchase more than one triple pack you could have more than one controller and therefore you could connect up multiples. You will need multiple SATA power connections though so it does become tricky. But here you can see the connector and how it's different from the one you get in the single pack. So although it connects up to the fan in the same way on the other end instead of having two cables you have one flat one and that fat flat one actually connects and uses both the power and RGB signal and sends them both to the control box vice versa so you have the power coming through there instead of two cables you now have one which is a nicely thought out design also makes the cables potentially a bit neater although obviously a bit fatter as well so there's a bit more going on there 
but you basically plug that into the control box and then connect up the fans in the way you want. So a maximum of up to four fans per connector, and there's only four connectors on the control box, you might have less. Obviously, I'm going to have less in the Air Mini because essentially that mostly has groups of two fans. So there's two on the front, two on the radiator, two on the bottom, and then three on top. So a slightly different setup. So what I was doing here, and I've done a video separately on this, is to show out the layout and logic of how you connect all these up. So be sure to check that out in the description if you're more curious and want to know about how you connect up the fans. You can see that it's possible to have multiple groups of three. So in this theoretical layout that I've created. We've got three on the top, three on the bottom, three on the front and one at the rear. And then obviously you're just plugging in the cables necessary to connect those up and plugging them in. If you have slightly different groups, slightly different layouts, which I'm going to, in my case, you might end up with one fan that you can't connect to the control box. The option there is to either use a splitter cable or to plug it directly into the motherboard using the single cables that, that come with the single fan packs and you can then have RGB control via your motherboard software but not via L-Connect so things become a bit messy if you have additional fans outside the controller. So once the controller is all connected up to the fans you then just need to connect to the USB connection and this allows you to control the RGB lighting and fan speed via Leon Lee's L-Connect software which is really handy and it has been updated so it's worth checking that out. I'll leave a link to the updated version in the description but L-Connect 3 now has a number of different changes on it and then you can also as I said connect up the RGB header so this uses a 5 volt RGB header you're looking for rain J rainbow or something similar on your motherboard be sure to not use the 12 volt with the four pins in it because that won't work and it could cause problems so you want to make sure that you're looking for the 5 volt one. This allows you to control the RGB lighting from your motherboard software. So in my case it's going to be Armory Crate but it might also be something like MSI Center or other software. So you then have the option to control the RGB lighting either via L-Connect or to sync it up with other things on your motherboard or connect it to your PC via your motherboard software and then plugging it in with a system fan header allows you to do the same so that you can have control over the fans via that and PWM control so make sure you use a system fan header with PWM control options. Now I've installed most of the fans but I wanted to show you some of the process for that so I'm mounting two of them on the Galahad cooler that I had already installed in here and obviously using the long screws to do that. I've set those to intake so the pulling air from the back which obviously means I'm missing out on some of the infinity fan goodness from there but I think this is personally the best layout for this case and what I've tested and it still looks nice from the rear they've got obviously a very nice Leon Lee logos in the middle of them with a sort of metal finish it looks really nice not as nice as the infinity mirrors that you'll see in a second on the front but still really well done now you can then obviously as i said run the cable in a different direction if you wish you can see that i'm actually pulling it back towards the back here and then tucking it away through there but you can adjust the cables and the other point of note as i said which i haven't shown unfortunately but you can remove the clips from the ends of the fans if they're in the way or if you just want to tighten things up so you can see you can take those off by just twisting them which is pretty cool it shows you how to do that in the manual and then once you run the cables to the back of the case once again we're just connecting the arcs to the control box so making sure all the fans are plugged in and connected and then run those cables through to the front and connect them up as i said already to your various different headers make sure you connect it up to sata power now one of the things that i noted when i connected them up and turn it on for the first time is that the fans weren't spinning and so it don't panic if you see the same thing what i found is i actually had to download and update l connect so i just left all the doors off and left it running while i updated l connect because i had l connect already installed so you might not have this issue if you don't have l connect installed but download and install the latest version of L-Connect and then all the fans will spin nicely and then you can see the RGB lighting. I'll show you some of the various schemes in a minute. One quick thing of note is you'll see that the back fan on here isn't running with the same RGB lighting and that's because that one's plugged into the motherboard header and so it's getting RGB from there instead of from L-Connect so it has a different RGB scheme to the rest of them. Something to bear in mind and a reason to get a second controller perhaps to make things a bit more logical. 
Now you can see a look at the RGB lighting from various angles. Obviously you've seen the front and rear of the fans, but if you look closely at the sides and the affinity mirrors, you'll see a nice bit of RGB lighting there. You have lighting around the ring, you have lighting around the edge of the fan, and obviously the infinity mirrors both in the center of the fan on the front and down the sides as well. And you can see what I was talking about earlier on with the various layers created within those mirrors as well, which is really neat. Now I dive into L-Connect software and just show you a couple of things. Now obviously I have the streamers installed as well. I've done a video separately on these. And the nice thing about this is the RGB lighting will work across all the devices. So when you change the RGB lighting on one, the same scheme will go to all of them. So you can basically sync up the lighting across here and you can see a number of the different effects in here. Now L-Connect allows you to also adjust the lighting on a fan by fan basis. So you can see that you can color in the fans and also the streamers and basically adjust the lighting across the whole thing. In a minute, I'll show you the RGB lighting control for just the fans as well. And also I want to show a test of the sound levels just to give you an idea of what it's like. But what you'll see is some really striking RGB lighting. Some of the best I've seen and also some of the nicest looking fans, even when they're not powered on, to be honest. There are all sorts of different RGB effects that you can choose from. So the lighting effects for the SL120 include rainbow, rainbow morph, static color, breathing color, breathing rainbow, tai chi, color cycle, runaway, mop up, pac-man, meteor, meteor rainbow, color meteor, lottery, warning, voice, mixing, stack, tide, scan, double meteor, meteor contest, meteor mix, return arc, double arc, you get the idea, there's a lot of them, there's a lot of RGB lighting effects going on in there, and you can see a taste of a lot of them in here, and some of them are insane, and if they're on too fast, and you suffer from photosensitive epilepsy, you may well struggle, so I've actually slowed down a lot of them to avoid some of that misery, and here you can see, just look at the RGB lighting controls, obviously just for the fans, now I was showing you how you basically can sync it up, one of the things that you'll notice is there's a motherboard lighting sync button at the top here, there's a switch above all that, so if you switch that over, obviously that will then use the RGB control on your motherboard software to then sync up the fan lighting with any other lighting in the case or any other products. So for example, if you had an ASUS motherboard and an ASUS peripherals, you might then sync it up so that it then gives you the same RGB lighting across all of them. But if you want to make the most of the various effects from Lee and Lee's fans, then you can do it in here. You can link them all together. You can choose the various colors. You can go through and select the various different lighting effects in here there's loads of options you're going to change the speed and the brightness and you'll see that you also can select the way it's lit up so you can choose which part of the fans lit up as well so there's loads of different options in what you can tweak and change in here another thing that you'll notice is that in this section there's also an option to adjust the fan mode so you can change the fan speed in here really simple interface for adjusting the fan speed and basically going between quiet and fast fan speeds and the various different levels of speed but another thing that you can do is obviously you can adjust that speed within the motherboard software if you so choose and you can also create a custom fan curve so i'm not going into detail on that in this video i'm focusing mostly on the noise levels and other things but there are various different settings that you can tweak within here and lots of things to change. Now, one of the things I wanted to show is the sound level. So with all the covers off, I actually put the fans up to their fastest mode just to demonstrate how loud it got. And I found it was in the top 60s in terms of decibels. It was fairly loud. Obviously, this isn't a fair test because you probably wouldn't have the doors off in order to test out how loud your fans are getting. But it is quite loud, I do find generally rgb fans do get quite loud and they do ramp up there's obviously a lot of fans in here we have 10 fans so there's a lot of fans going on inside this case and a lot of potential noise being generated but you can also drop it down into quiet mode and doing that and putting the doors on and making sure everything's as it would be normally i found out i was getting just in the high 40s in terms of decibels which isn't as loud certainly not as obnoxious and easy on the ear and easy on the eye the finished product also looks the business i think you'll find 
the Air Mini is a brilliant case and it looks really nice with a now complement of wonderful SL120 Infinity fans. Hopefully you found this video useful. Subscribe for more and come back and see the Versus video to compare all of the fans. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Be sure to check out the links in the description to find out more. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching.